Hello. Good morning. Good morning. All right. All right, it looks like we're auto recording, so that's cool. And now I need a couple things. I'm gonna get our agenda out and get ourselves set up here. And I'm sure we'll start probably like three minutes, uh, three minutes after or so. I'm gonna put y'all on mute while I violently type or put me on mute rather, hold on one sec. All right, hopefully that's the right link and not one of my other 45 million Google Doc things that I have open right now. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's in the chat. Y'all can put your names on that in the attendee section. That would be lovely, just so you know who we're talking to today. Loving the, loving the shower look, Hippie. I dig it. That's exactly how I wear my towel as well. So I'm not alone. <laughs> I uh, had to go to the store and get the conditioner. Um, Cause I, yeah. out, I said, we'll just wait till the lockdown's over. Um, but I had this big dread that was about this long on the back of my, <laughs> so it was time. <laughs> All right. It's 33 right now i see we've got hippie eeyore carolyn amy karen i think that's hold on let me just make sure um yeah let's do it all right and then all right so everybody's got the agenda all right i went ahead and did a launch um contributor growth sub project issue and there is a lot on there and the method behind the madness here, and let me share my screen as well. Um, da, 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 da. Room tab, where are you at? Here you are. Share. Um, it's got a lot on here, obviously, but each bullet sort of represents what I think, you know, and hear and just like know from various sources within the CNCF community, whether it's TOC, whatever. Um, thinking that each one of these will probably be some kind of work stream uh, and then what would be done for us to launch. So obviously we need things like a README, um, who's owning what stream, um, just some very basic conceptual foundational things right now that we need to figure out so that we can really get moving. So before I start, um, do folks want to do intros? Um, not sure if everybody knows each other. Um, Let's just do intros, just just to be just to be safe. Hippie, you go first. I'm looking at you. Know, you're, and give, give a little brief give a brief intro about yourself and why you're here and why you're interested in in doing this work. Um, I am a hippie hacker, and I've been doing open source stuff for a while. And uh, I'm really fascinated by our community's ability to scale and to be inclusive. And I think that what we do here to be really useful in other organizations. And so I. Uh, particularly the, the key factor seems to be growing new people into leadership. And so the strategy that we have for helping everybody um, start from what is this and what, and to being here, please come join. That's why I'm here. Awesome. Uh, Carolyn, I think you um, were interested most in this working group. Tell the, tell the group what's up with you and who you are. Sure. Um, 
So I'm interested in two things. One is I like to make things explicit and help support existing contributors and maintainers in understanding how they can make their lives easier by communicating outward to the community about what their processes, how they do things, so that there's not a lot of awkward weirdness of like, how do I explain to people that what they did is just weird? Um, and then also uh, protecting themselves and making what they're doing sustainable. And then on the flip side, uh, I like to do a lot of outreach and mentoring with uh, new contributors and trying to make it a really good process to kind of get them working up that contribution ladder and actually defining the ladder so you don't just need to like happen to know someone in order to be a cool person who turns into a maintainer. Um, these kind of things like near and dear to my heart, like every project I'm on, I kind of do this for every project. So I'd love to help with this. Yeah. And Karen. Hey, um, so I'm actually on the same team as Carolyn. Um, I am a community manager for multiple open source projects. Um, so part of this experience is also just for me to learn because um, I feel like, you know, um, the bigger ecosystem has a lot more experienced people um, who've been doing this stuff. And so, um, so I'm here to learn. And then also, um, I think, in a sense, bubble up the stuff from um, all of my teams up to kind of um, see like what all the different concerns are out there. Yeah. And how many of your how many of your projects are in CNCF? Just out of curiosity. Oh, um, how I'm many? Kind of There's Helm Brigade, Virtual Hublet, um, SMI just joined. <laughs> <One million. laughs> um, and then there's like other projects from like sister teams, Kata yeah. just joined as well. Um, so yeah. Cool. Hopefully no, I was, just, I was just curious. Yeah, I know. I haven't been keeping <laughs> out. Good question. Well, that's not, and the reason why I ask is it's good to have folks like you even like just join the call because we get to hear what some of the other projects are doing that like, you know, if we individually don't work with them. So I think, uh, your experience is definitely, uh, critical here for us, especially in a, in a bootstrap stage. Eeyore and Amy. Hey, we're here from CNCF. Eeyore actually has much more salient things to say this morning about like some of the contributor growth stuff, so I'll let him go. Um, I don't have so much stuff to say here, but as Amy mentioned, we, we both work at CNCF. Uh, specifically myself, I um, used to be the Kubernetes contributor for a while and used to work with the Kubernetes contributor experience for a while, but besides that, also help CNCF with our uh, contributor initiatives, mentor initiatives, and all the related stuff. Woo! And y'all are awesome. Thanks so much for helping us. This is going to be awesome. Uh, we do have, for folks that were not on the last contributor strategy meeting, uh, Eeyore and, and other folks discussed like what repos we own, why we own them, etc. Uh, we kind of came to this conclusion that the CNCF uh, contributor strategy repo, which is like our SIG meta repo, will have things about our processes, maybe our guidance, um, things along those lines. And then we also have the CNCF uh, contribute repo as well. Folks that thought that contributors might uh, see that more. So we should have a lot of documentation uh, for the contributors and maintainers in that repo. Um, so sort of like the division of, you know, uh, a policy repo and a procedural repo, if you, if you want to put it that way. So um, just wanted to talk about some of that housekeeping stuff first and foremost, in case you're like, what's going on? Um, so we're taking care of a lot of that. Uh, we've also been working hard on GitHub um, management and admin related stuff, Eeyore, Steven, Jared, so many others, Josh, uh, to get us all hooked up with um, some kind of workflow and process and review process and things along those lines for stuff that we're putting inside of our repos. Um, the one thing we do want to make sure of is that we are not like blatantly putting our employers stuff in as guidance, like meaning as the word, if it's in as like a, as a resource, that's one thing. But uh, if it's in as guidance and we're like saying X, Y, Z company says that you should do it this way. Um, we should just make sure that our guidance is a little bit more um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Not, uh, you know, non-biased or, you know, not, you know, geared towards a company, but geared towards us as a, as a group. I think part so, of it is just that we want to be ahead. able to be generating and synthesizing our recommendations that are for the CNCF as opposed to just wholesale adopting one thing from, from a company. It should be unique to what our own ecosystem and community. Like that's part of it too. Exactly. So just, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to ask some questions really quick to the crew. So if for the folks that have read this issue, um, is there anything, uh, any one of these bullets that calls out to you and just, and remember, we got to keep focus. That's another priority here because our crew is going to, one, expand quickly, but two, also expand in scope. So we just want to make sure that we're actually going to do something, right? So is there any bullets on here that really call out to you as far as like, I'm definitely able, capable, interested in working on something there? I mean, for, for me, I'm mostly interested in the contributor ladder and then things like the contributor guide or like the maintainers guide. All right. <laughs> and then, and then anybody else? And, and by the way, it's, if you don't own anything right now or don't claim anything, that's not a big deal. I just want to get us going on some of these. Anybody uh, else? I'm happy to help Carolyn on that stuff. Okay. One thing that I, kind of a meta thing is, is automation around this um, and, and taking the automation and, and including infrastructure all the way down to hopefully a base level on Kubernetes. I know that within the, um, within the Kates community, we rely really heavily on the Kates Infra Working Group, an amazing group of people, but all of that infra is very heavily uh, googly. Uh, and so we tend to, by modeling um, a Google way, uh, kind of let the world know that that's the, maybe the only way. I think it would be really cool if we, at the CNCF level, were able to provide things like prow.cncf.io and integrations for all of the CNCF hosted projects, including the way that we automate our community aspects, but maybe put a little of effort of trying to, um, maybe, I don't know, this is just thought, that, that's what I'd love to be, to help with is the automation. Currently at this quarter, one of my goals is to bring up prow.cncf.io because the CNCF Kate's conformance repo is where um, vendors submit their test results. And we wanna automate that and say, yes, you did pass all of these tests, but it's not appropriate for that to go under prow.kates.io. So it's a good opportunity um, to start doing that new thing, maybe on multi multi vendors or at least a non a non googly vendor. That um, we might want so incredibly useful. <laughs> yeah, we might want to spin up an entire working group for that. I don't know if it fits into the scope of this particular working group, but I Fair think enough. it does fall under. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Was I mute? Sorry, you I there? Hear you. Okay, cool. I'm oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so let's talk offline about um, about spinning that into either its own working group or um, something where the scope is a little bit wider, I think. Um, yeah. For this one, I think we should really um, start foundationally. I feel like Prow is like a couple steps ahead of what we should try to accomplish at first here. I don't know what anybody else's thoughts are, but I definitely think it's it's relevant, important, and should probably be its own working group. What are some other thoughts? I think, I think some of the guidance and um, ideas that we come out with for how people can structure their product projects in certain ways will help shape some of the automation actions that whatever we come up with will do by default or have options for. So I think one process may feed uh, into the next step a lot um because we may not do things exactly like kate's proud does we may decide that we want something a little different or whatever um i had one question if you don't mind one thing that um i've struggled with with my projects is like where to manage projects and things like that and i was curious paris if you had an idea of where that fits in 
in various SIGs or just where to get help with that? Is this the right SIG for that kind of thing? Like, for example, help with using yeah. GitHub project boards versus other stuff that's out there. I definitely think that could be a part of this. Uh, okay. I mean, project management, um, the only problem that I think with, the only thing that I worry about it is we've, we've flip, uh, we've, what's the word, flubbered. I mean, Eeyore can also tell you a little bit about this. I feel like we have gotten stuck in Kubernetes land with project management because, um, no one wants to have us say you have to use one tool. It ends up just being this like great bike shed about how to do project management. So I, I guess if we, if we give guidance, then yeah. we should maybe give like options and things like that and not necessarily like one rule of law, but definitely I completely agree. I mean, it's one of the ways that we're wild, wild west still. Eeyore, do you have contacts there as well? Uh and I can just add here, so the final end, we, we just decided and within the Kubernetes world that everybody can do their project management as they prefer. So every every granular group, every SIG, um, and every, um, some context alone that they, they do as they prefer. So like, as we do with the C contributor experience, we have the C contributor experience boards and we have the dedicated sessions. Um, Working grouping for, for example, they have their own process and, and all this stuff. So that, 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 that's how it works at the final end, because we, we've tried multiple times to bootstrap the unified community wide project management process. And we've just failed multiple times with the, with the different attempts and with the different analysts. Yeah. I was thinking, I don't want to derail. I was just more thinking you mentioned automation. And, and for example, GitHub has project boards, but there's no automation for like a new issue is added. And there's no good way to automatically have it added to your project board. <laughs> and those were something that like, if there's bots or automations we're making that can do pluggable individual things like that, that just work with random default tools. It doesn't have to be a, a like everyone must do this, but like, we've got a, a building block in our prowl toolkit. Like that would be cool, but I know that's not really related to what we're trying to talk about. So that's all I was getting at. I think that uh, it could be easier now from the automation standpoint comparing it to that where we were like two or three years ago because of the GitHub actions. Like two or three years ago, GitHub actions didn't exist. And as far as I remember, we ended up, even the project boards didn't exist. So. These days we can we can automate it probably more efficiently. I don't want to say easier, but somehow easier with the GitHub actions. At least we we have all the uh, all, all the available tools, all the possible available tools directly from GitHub, and we don't need to develop um, something our own. So probably is good, but probably is good on the scale of the Kubernetes project. Probably with the uh, current CNCF size. Uh, I mean, the CNC of GitHub size, we don't need something uh, extremely powerful and extremely complicated as proud these days, but it can be wrong. Cool. Well, if we just put like you down to that, I'd be totally interested, I guess. <laughs> I put you down here for like maybe project management guidance. Um, obviously, this can be like a P1 or two, even two if you want. Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah, because I, I like wear the PM hat for the projects I'm on. So yeah, like whether or not that's my jam, it's what I do. <laughs> yep. Cool. And as the issue with the PM stuff that we had that we haven't 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 had enough manpower, so uh, it just was like enough time consuming. So if you can allocate and if, if you have all the necessary experience with that, it's, it's really awesome because um, humans and time availability was one of the biggest issues again in the past. So it's, it's yeah. easier to define and develop the guidelines and define the program, but sometimes it's more complicated just to maintain it in a, um, the same way as, as it could be. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And then let's see. So we've heard from Carolyn, Karen, Eeyore. Eeyore, is there anything on this list? I mean, and 
it's okay if you're like, no, I'm just here to hang out. Uh, is there anything on this list that you wanted to either take, work on, own, or anything, or kick off for that matter? Um, I'd like to uh, I'd like to remind us that I'm working on the um, on the contributor repo redesign and restructure, uh, and after like. I, I'd like to share like the renewed portion of it probably tomorrow, tomorrow on Wednesday. Uh, it's basically the same content, but a bit uh, differently structured, easily, more easily readable. And after that, I'd like us to uh, also to review it and provide more details on what we're missing there. So the current content is available here at the, at the repo. Um, you can take a look there right now. Uh, the things that I'm doing is just restructuring it and um, uh, making it more easily consumable. But if we miss something there, so please open an issue there, let me know, or uh, yeah, basically please, please open an issue and let me know so we can incorporate it there. Awesome. And then you are, as far as that list to the KDEV, that's a part of that restructure as well. I mean, not KDEV, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of Kubernetes. Um, the dev mailing lists. Mm, say it again, please. The dev mailing lists work is, is a part of that restructure as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, because right now they are there, but they're not so visible. So now you have to go right. to the projects and also, structure could be better so that's that's what i'd like to make better right now okay cool all right this is sort of like a meta thing which is good for mm -hmm. us. all right and then i think i've got everybody and then i would i mean i'm interested in all of it so obviously i'll just take what's take what's ever left over and important to us um anybody else want to claim anything or kick off anything from this list and um we have the AMAs or the, the interviews stuff? Yep, so this um, this right here with this intention, uh, what we wanna do with the contributor strategy meeting, so we meet bi-weekly, so you know, twice a month, depending on where calendars fall. And we're, take, we're gonna take one of those meetings, make a dedicated time uh, for at least the last 30 minutes of the meeting and invite all maintainers if they so choose to come uh, for an AMA. And they can ask us pretty much anything they want. So they can ask us about their specific contributor growth related problem, issue, opportunity, whatever, you know, whatever they wanna talk about. Mm -hmm. So I wanna know from this crew, one, is that a good idea? Two, um, should we create a separate time? The reason why I have been putting on, you know, putting it on to the, the contributor strategy meetings is because of meeting fatigue. Um, but if we need some kind of separate AMA, like I'm semi open to hearing, hearing thoughts on that. So what are y'all's general consensus thoughts, discussion around this idea of a contributor slash maintainer AMA to get help like right away. Good, bad, and different. Do you think you'll- My thumbs are up, but maybe my video feeds down. I heard I Karen and Hippie. drive it off of how much we need that meeting for ourselves because we did pick right. it as like a time that works for us. At the moment, I have a feeling that the majority of our time that we need together is going to be in our sub projects. And so this would be a great use for the larger um, SIG to be able to connect with the community because like that's vitally important for us actually helping people as opposed to just doing ivory tower work. Um, right. So I'm all for it. Okay. And the other deal is we're creating a maintainer circle as well, which obviously will produce its own meetings and things like that. So my, methodol my methodology to the madness here is like, okay, let's at least get people heard immediately um, in case there's like any project out there that's like really, you know, needing something immediately. And then we, they can tap into like maintainer circle and we can tap into maintainer circle as far as delivering the educational content that we need. Um, mm. 
So interestingly, I, I'm not sure that actually like, you know, separate meetings out is going to be like, you know, super valuable for this. Maybe being able to say the um, contributor growth Q&A is also maintainer circle or am I just totally misreading this? I think you're misreading this. Maintainer circle will be uh, much more in depth. Um, and we're talking about a thousand maintainers. Okay. Um, they all, they want to do mini circles. They want to talk about burnout. They want camaraderie. Um, so I think the maintainer circle will be focused and that's where we can also deliver webinars and our presentations and things like that. Um, I'm concerned that if we did that, then we wouldn't have a meeting period. Meaning like we wouldn't be able to meet about the stuff like the ivory tower stuff. So that I would think also, the, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. The maintainer circle, um, it's important to have it a little bit separate from the wider community because maintainers often, everything you do is transparent to the point where it's really difficult to have frank conversations where you can be vulnerable and um, get feedback from other people who don't need something from you, but can be there to support you. And so I think it's important to carve out that space for them and instead of trying to make it um, something where <laughs> it's open to like a wider group of people where like the random public, for example, the Helm users may show up to where the Helm maintainers are trying to get support from other maintainers because it'll be very difficult to talk about things that are important to them when the people who um, need their help and are asking for things from them uh, are going to be listening in, if that makes sense. Uh, so it kind of does need to be a really separate space, in my opinion. All right, sorry, I'm just taking some notes on this issue. I don't mean to pick on Helm. This is the big one, but you know. <laughs> came to my time. Um, any other comments about the AMA? All right. And then um, speaking of like webinars and presentations and stuff like that, I wanted to see if I'm going to, I'm going to create a separate issue for this one in particular, but I wanted to see if we could start crowdsourcing some of the work that we've already done. So like, I know Carolyn, I know so many of us have done like talks on like, you know, how to contribute, um, what, you know, what it means to be a maintainer, um, stuff like that. And let's just start crowdsourcing it. And then what we can do is we can do a review period and uh, essentially um, deliver on some of this and say that, that this is kind of like a service. Uh, like saying, hey, we can come to your project and give you either these workshops, trainings, or we can just stand them up on our own. Um, but we have such a plethora of information amongst this crew right now that it would be a shame for it to um, for it to just like hang out there in the ether. So uh, I'll create a separate issue for it. And then what we can do is just add some of our resources. Is that cool with y'all? All right. Yeah, I'm taking notes for my video feed. All right, yeah, and then same with you, Hippie, if you've got like any automation talks or like anything, or, or even how about this, even other people that you've seen give talks, um, that's also, you know, cool too, uh, especially if we, they could probably come in and do it here. They don't necessarily need to be a part of our crew. Uh, a lot of people would probably think that's cool. So uh, we can also solicit folks. All right. And then we've got recruiting contributors. So this is, quite, this is kind of like a recruiting playbook almost that I was thinking about where we talk about how they recruit, where they recruit, um, how they communicate that. Um, this seems to be a really, really hot topic amongst TOC members, at least, and GB, at least that's why I hear from Matt Klein. Um, so I'll just sacrifice myself and, and put myself there. But if anybody else wants to work on that, that sort of falls in line with, 
you know, some of the other stuff we're doing with local like ladder and templates and things like that, but it's not very direct. You know, the goal here is to get contributors and maintainers to be more direct about what they need. Anybody else interested in that? Yes. That was you. That playbook when you're done. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then this sort of falls in this one right here on the net. This next one here, role handbook, uh, role handbook templates, building roles outside of the usual contributor ladder. So this is kind of like uh, maybe I would say P1 to two. I would actually say it's P1, meaning like let's do the contributor ladder work for work first because that's sort of the really key roles there, which are like maintainer, approver, things like that. Does anybody else, uh, does this call to anybody once we're set? Can you explain a little bit, when you say building roles outside of the usual contributor ladder, what kind of yeah. roles are you thinking in your head? Because when I hear it, I may be thinking of something different. Um, so in Kubernetes, we've got, I think, six teams now. Uh, mm -hmm. And each one of those teams is different than the contributor ladder. One's the release team. So obviously okay. Karen did the communications manager role and that had, that produced a role book. Um, this is a way to get people to think about succession and yeah. also onboarding. Um, oh, and so, and then we also have the contributor summit events team. They've got the lead, they've got a content person. Then we also have an API review committee and each one of those people in the committee has a role. Uh, so like they review APIs and stuff like that that come in for certain things, you know, each one does anyway. Um, and then their advice and guidance is, as, is like a whole as a committee. Things like that, um, that people really only, because I think in open source, we really only say, okay, a contributor is a member or a contributor is a reviewer. Like, I feel like I can hear that a lot, right? But this is kind of like, this borders that like code, non-code, contributor, not contributor, but like we're actually making them roles, right? Yeah. So um that's that can be set off at like i said at you know after we have some momentum from the contributor ladder though i think this is really cool i just yeah it would have to be after the other stuff yeah yeah i mean the contributor ladder is uh like a p0 meaning it's like you need that in order to grow your other areas like, okay. i feel like that's like you have to describe your your core area before you can describe your other areas in my opinion sure put me on with that uh, okay I'll help too, if you need it. You already have two people. <laughs> no, you have experience with this, Karen, so you have to do it with us. <laughs> Sorry, that, Kate, that takes care of everything we have in the queue thus far. Uh, I listed what's done, but what is done for this issue, but does anybody else have anything, now that we've talked about this for like 20 minutes, is there anything that's glaringly like, I cannot believe it's not on this list. Related to, remember, related to contributor growth. We've got a governance subproject going. We've got some other thing. And, like, we'll maybe even have this automation subproject with Hippie going. Anything that really relates to that. I have one thing that I know is going to come up, especially for people in the Kubernetes group, which yep. is um, when they're looking for help as our SIG ramps up, is if we could just have something somewhere that is written down that says, come here for, come to us for these things and go to uh, Kubernetes uh, contributor experience for these things. Because um, otherwise they're just going to ask you, Paris. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or they're just, it's just going to be unclear. It may be nice just to like. So like in the, maybe in like in the inside of the readme? Yeah, yeah. Let's just okay. say it somewhere real quick up front. Um, because as we try to drive some people to our our SIG and the output of our SIG, I think that'll be a question for that larger community. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like a, a treaties or anything. Yeah, things. yeah, no, I hear you. All right. Anybody else think that anything's missing? All right. 
So when the, it, this issue will close and will be officially launched once we have something a little bit more descriptive in the README. Um, we already have, actually, we already know, hold on, let me edit this. We do know who is owning what now. Um, what the first thing is that we accomplish and send a note to the TOC and the maintainer group about our AMA, which is a little bit meta, meta about us. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this. What does the first thing we accomplish look like and the definition of done for things? Um, this does not and should necessarily not be answered now unless, you know, folks immediately have some things that come to their head. Um, but once we disperse and start digging into, um, and start digging into some of this stuff, I think we're going to see what done looks like maybe in like the next week to two weeks. Um, anybody have any initial thoughts on this? And do you think that we can deliver something in the time frame, meaning something, whatever that something is, um, do we feel like we could deliver that, uh, say, within the next three to four months? Yes, in that time frame. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be a lot of, like, iterative work on yeah. you know, what should be in there, and obviously, but I think... If we're talking the span of months, we can do it. Yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, for, so for let's each question, deliver. I hope we can get one of our P0s. <laughs> yes. But I don't know which one. Yeah, okay. So yeah, let's so actually we did, we identified some of the P1. So I feel like this one is P0 and then this one's probably P0. Yeah. Uh, and then if we're, I'm just doing little teeny notes here. I'll, uh, I'll make them better later. Um, okay. All right. So it looks like we've got the templates, um, our, just our crowdsourced, what we already have as a collective body and the contributor ladder building as P0s. Is that in agreement with the crew with what we should be working on first. Looks great. All right. All right. Yeah, and then when we do all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can, honestly. Like I'm I'm and that's why I put it in the issue. And I wouldn't have put it in here unless I think we can accomplish it. And I really like with this crew and like just the plethora of experience that we have with the contributor strategy grew, I'm really feeling positive. Oh no, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm saying yeah, no, no, I no. can't wait to see all yeah. this because it'll be amazing. Yeah. It'll be great to see all this in one yeah. place for people as a resource. All right, let's try to... All right, and then... I do have some conversation. We can, you want to start on some P0 conversations? Just get right rolling into it or no? Yeah, what do you want to talk about now? All right. Um, let's talk about the templates because this is one of the ones where I don't think we actually need to start from scratch. This is another area where I feel like there's a ton of prior art. And let me show you what I mean. I'm actually going to stop sharing and share another screen. Hold on. Um, blah, 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 blah. where is it? Here it is. Cool. Here's one. Chrome tab. Here we go. Share. So this is a template for writing contributor guides based on research of like 40 different projects. So uh, this is a really cool, I think, resource for us. Uh, it talks about just how to get started and like what the template is, which is right here. And what we can do is we can review things like this uh, and we can either make changes to it because Nafia uh, is okay with PRs. Uh, we can also turn it into our own thing, meaning we can like Mad Lib some cloud native words in here and make our like, you know, again, PR that into ours as a contributing markdown template. 
Um, what do y'all think about that? This is something that we can review. Let me put it on our issue too. And then there is another, there's another resource as well. Let me stop sharing here again. And it's, it's called the Good Docs Project. And they have a, they have stuff related to contributors. Hold on, where's my issue? Here it is. All right, comment. And then I'm going to share my screen again. All right. So here's the two links in the issue. Um, so y'all can take a look at those. Uh, my, my idea here is we can collect, like I said, collect, let's collect a bunch of stuff that already exists uh, and then analyze it. Does anybody know other, um, other good resources off the top of their head or that they can include here? Um, I'd like to, to look at those first to understand yeah. the differences between some of the, I don't have like generic templates, but I've seen some ones that I found really helpful on other projects. Yeah, yeah. definitely include, yeah, include, that's the exact thing we should do. Include anything that you think looked really good, anything that was impressive, um, Karen, you too, like if you've seen stuff when you're out and about that's really impressive. Uh, Nafia's has uh, stuff that's probably not cloud native. I think the 40, pro I, when, I did, when I did some digging, I think the 40 projects that she analyzed, I think one of them might have been Kubernetes, but I don't think so. So um, that's what I'm saying. It might not necessarily, some of the stuff might not be relevant for us. Some of it might. Um, so let's take a look and we can do an, an, uh, an analysis. We can either kick up an issue or uh, meaning uh, an, an issue that talks about what's good and bad, or we can do like a Google doc if you don't, or some other kind of collaborative doc if you don't want it to be public yet. Um, yeah, I think it may be a little sensitive to, to yeah. speak about other people's stuff where they would yep. see it because I think it'd be kind of hurtful, <laughs> potentially. Yeah. So, Carolyn, do you want to like kick up a doc of some I would variety? Love to. Yeah, I'll yeah, it doesn't matter. I, I'm, I'm open with whatever you want to use. Totally cool. Um, oh, it'll be Google Docs. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we can start on that. And then I think what our, what our definition of done would probably look like here is maybe a nice, you know, uh, template repo kind of like this. I mean, obviously larger than this, but, you know, contributor data, you know, templates, and then in here have some folder that's like, you know, contributing templates and contributor ladder templates and, you know, d dev guide templates, contributor guide templates, stuff like that. So um, that's kind of what I'm envisioning here for our repo anyway. So people can come in and get what they need as far as documentation for contributors quickly and, um, you know, without worry. All right. So, I mean, that's really it for today. I thought we were going to take a whole hour and, and do that, but I think it sounds like everybody knows kind of what they want to do, why they want to do it and how they want to do it. So I think our next contrib strat meeting is, is it this Thursday or next Thursday? It is, Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Yes, the oh, 23rd. 23rd. So questions, concerns, comments about this. I feel like we've got a lot of work to do. Um, sounds like everybody's ready to do it, which is awesome. Anything else? And or else we get 15 minutes of our life back? Well, technically 10, because Amy likes to cut the Zoom meetings five minutes. <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate nice, that. I'm trying to be nice to folks. Y'all, my hair needs a cut. Like, this is <laughs> like. Seriously. I'm, yeah. That's why I keep messing with my hair today, y'all. I'm like, just like, ah! I just want to like put it in a ponytail and just chop. And I don't care what it looks like, but at least it gets a, like, a I foot think And you are an adding a. I'm adding that link to the issue right now. 
Yeah. Oh my, let me see your hair, Amy. Uh, <laughs> this one, this one is more correct. The latest one is more correct. Oh, okay. okay. Amy, your hair looks so great today. Yeah, I'll, I'll hop on more video calls with like, you know, the being able to like, you know. Yeah, there you go. Over the shoulder looks good. Oh, I know. <laughs> Like, who cares what it looks like from the back? Just push it all forwards. At this point, I'm just oh my gosh, that yeah. cat joining all the meetings. <laughs> By the way, if you're watching the recording, this is an over meeting. <laughs> this is over meeting topics. Like, <laughs> this is not a part of the official CNCF thing. <laughs> what? You mean we're not going to be making recommendations on how to look good on a webcam? I think we no. should. That should be part of it. Like, build up your confidence to turn on video on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or, I know, it's like, if you if your hair can look as bad as Paris, you can join the meeting. <laughs> exactly. When in oh doubt, look like a potato. Just turn on the potato. I know. <laughs> we should do, you know, we should inspire. We should inspire. We should, like, be the group that we want all the groups to be and, like, do it, like, silly hats and... Uh, costumes if you care or like or Carolyn showing all of her plushies like oh yeah we, oh my gosh we, yeah we should be the we should be the inspiration that <laughs> yeah, we need like plushie of the week yeah, yeah. well right. with that that's it for me all. I call it. <laughs> yeah call it at least call the recording for the sake of the recording's purpose oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the thing about these is, like, they, they will just record, like, no matter, like, what is, like, you know, as soon as you come in, like, it will record, which is nice, because you never have to be able to turn on the recording, but then it's challenging on the other end, if, like, someone shares their screen and shares chat or whatever, then you gotta go back in and edit it out. Yep, yeah, you're, you're, you're preaching to that YouTube right. Zoom choir over here. It's a balance. <laughs> if you are too kind to be editing it out, we have put so many things up on YouTube before that we're like, whoops. Um, <laughs> No, trust me. I. Yeah. We've gotten some of those requests. We and we still do the. Hey, oh my gosh! I totally forgot that I shared my important work information. Uh, in like at like you know three minutes and thirty three seconds in. What do I do? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> all right, y'all. It's been swell. I'll definitely see you on the 23rd, and I'm sure we're all going to be chatting in Slack. Oh, also, let's try really, really, really hard to work on the mailing list. That'd be I, good. I'm so bad at it, but I want you, I mean, I'm trying, and I'm saying, I'm putting that out into the ether because I want to be better at this. So, what uh, do you mean by I, I just, hard on it? Do we need to make one? Do we just need to talk more on it? Just talk more, just, I guess, talk about our next steps on there, if, especially if they're not in issues, like, because we, I think we're just, like, in, me personally, I've built this culture around Slack, and, like, yeah. talking in Slack, and, like, making decisions in Slack, and, like, I'm constantly going, nope, I need to take this elsewhere, like, yeah. so, yeah, yeah, keep me honest, that's number one, say Paris, this needs to go in an issue, or the mailing list, please, like, I'm not going to take any, like, issue with that, I'm going to be like, you're right, <laughs> <laughs> um, and same with anybody on the call. Like, if you see any of us, like, talking in Slack, which is awesome. Like, we want to communicate real time in Slack. But if there's, like, something that, like, we're making a decision about or, like, the guidance thereof, um, let's talk about that. I actually and, have a mailing list checklist. And it, like, sits in front of me. And if, if I do anything that hits one of those checklists, even if I set it in Slack, I have to copy and paste it and put it on the mailing list. You know what? Tell me about the Slack checklist. first. No apologies. That's what happens, but it's got to go out to the mailing list then too. Right. Yeah. But tell me about this checklist. Cause that's honestly, that's a good part about like contributor strategy. I think that we should give to, to SIGs. I mean, not SIGs to projects, which is like, how are you communicating your decisions? And like, what are you talking about on the mailing list? Um, should I mail it to you on the mailing list? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. I'll send you my checklist on the mailing list. Yeah, send me the yeah, send me the mailing list decision checklist. Yeah, should this yeah. Be, like that would be that would be like a hilarious like meme workflow. Should this be on the mailing list? Yes oh my god, no? my life's yeah. a meme. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's. All right, y'all. Have a good day. Uh, see you on Slack. Keep me honest. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye all. Bye. Bye.